Hi everyone, welcome to this History Tour with Holly. Today I want to talk about Anthony Horowitz's latest Moonflower Murders. This is set um, in England and based on the story of an ex-publisher called Susan Ryland who comes back to England to investigate the missing daughter of the Trahernes who own a hotel called the Moonflower. Um, sorry, who, who own a hotel. Um, not the Moonflower, that's in the book. So it's it's a fascinating book and it's all about the... It, it, so it goes around this the story of Susan trying to find this woman, Cecily Trahern, and trying to figure out who has... Well, what's happened to her because just, she just vanished. Um, and it's all linked in with the murder of a man called Frank Paris that happened in their hotel, Brownlow Hall, uh, eight years before. Just before she disappeared, Cecily rang her parents and said she's figured out the identity of the murderer based on something in this book that Susan Ryland published called Atticus Punt Takes the Case. And so one of the most fascinating things about this novel is that it has a full novel inside it. So the first half of the novel is all about Susan Ryland coming back from Crete, taking the job, investigating the disappearance of Cecily and the murder of Frank Paris. And then she sits down to read the book and we read the book as well. And I listen to it as an audiobook, as I so often do. And so the entire book of Atticus Punt Takes the Case is read to the, the reader. And then of course the rest of the story resolves itself. And it was interesting. So I love Anthony Horowitz's work. I mean, I enjoy his young adult fiction, but I'm particularly interested in his adult fiction, his murder mysteries. Um, and honestly, this was a bit disappointing. It was so long because of the book in, in the middle. And to be honest, I think I enjoyed Atticus Punt Takes the Case, the novel it's inserted in it, more than Moonflower Murders. Because Atticus Punt Takes the Case was a classic, whodunit, detective story, basic, I don't know, clever, clever clues, lots of red herrings, interesting twists, that sort of thing. It was sort of nice and formulaic, whereas Moonflower Murders, as is classic Horowitz, has all sorts of twists and turns, but this time it really didn't hit home. Um, in the past, his other books, particularly Mad Fine Murders, like, you really, you just do not see it coming. The Sherlock Holmes ones, he did the remakes, they're brilliant, and you, like, I did not see the twists coming, but this time, I mean, I won't ruin it for you, but it's quite straightforward. There is, There are twists and there are interesting things, but I didn't love it. It was pretty disappointing and for such a long read. Anyway, if you like murder mysteries, it is interesting reading, um, but you have to be pretty committed. It was an 18 hour audio book or something. Um, anyway, so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really that great. So I wouldn't give it a, a strong rating. Um, before I finish, I just wanted to, oh yeah, I don't necessarily have a particular, this is your life lesson for today, but it is, it's just a sort of a beware. It's not quite as good as the previous ones. Uh, anyway, before I go, I just wanted to give a shout out to Book Book McGirt, if you see my earrings here, little books. Uh, they are a local business in Canberra who make their own jewelry. And I got these from my mum for Christmas. And they're super pretty, and so I highly recommend them. Yeah, they're called Book 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 like a chook. Um, anyway, and I thought I'd throw a shout out to them based, based on the fact that I'm wearing their earrings for my video. Anyway, thanks so much. See you next time.